Hello, my friends. Welcome back. It is garden tour time. However, this is going to be kind of an interesting walk because at first I was like, gosh, everything is like really quieting down out here. But I also thought to myself, this is the perfect living example for how a garden evolves. So uh, this garden is in its second year. So it's really just like a baby garden. Some of these things have just been in the ground for their very first full season. So there's a lot of things yet to be done. There's a lot of holes that I'm still filling. And I am actually finding that at this particular moment in time, I need to fill some holes. So I want to take you on. I want to show you what's working. I want to show you what is not working. And we're also going to do a little planting out back because my ranunculus and anemones that I have pre-sprouted are massive. I have been working nonstop the past week and I didn't get a chance to get them in the ground this past weekend because it was like a monsoon out here. So we're going to wrap things up with a little update and throwing those goodies in the ground. Okay, first things first, this little corner to the right of my front porch. I am still obsessed with the Honoré Jobert. It is really actually one of the strong flowering elements in my garden at this time. And so I think this was a solid move. It really helps fill in this space. And what's going to be fantastic is as it grows, it will start to kiss the bottom of this window here and provide just some amazing, amazing movement. The other thing that's kind of funny here is I did not plant this nasturtium, yet here she is just going for it. The next thing I want to update you on are my containers. If we move in here, you will notice I used to have a pepper right there in the middle. And what's so cool is when you add an element that you know is not going to last through the winter, you have to be strategic about its placement. And so what's really fun is I put that in knowing that it wouldn't last. However, I also knew that all these other elements would start growing. And growing, they have. I'm going to kind of zip you around. Okay, so over here we have this gorgeous pansy rose blotch. This sucker is now at least 10 inches tall. I need to get in here and pinch these back. By the way, if you've never pinched back your pansies or violas, you just chase it down to the bottom and literally pinch that bloom off. These have developed so beautifully. My Carex, this is Bowls Golden. It has really started to cascade down the edge. The other thing you can see right here, this is the spot where my little pepper was. Well, what's happened is the Carex is filled in. We've got this gorgeous little pincushion bush filling in. And then, of course, over here, we have the Senecio Angel Wings, which is just fabulous texture. And that has started to fill in where my pepper once was. So as you can see, this is like this container is going the distance. And, of course, here in the back, this is the Frizzle Sizzle Mini Tapestry. And I love that we have a little bit more orange coming out in that bottom petal. It is just, that is so pretty. So all in all, containers are doing really, really well. As we come down here, this kale, several of you have asked about, this is in the container just below. This is a red boar kale. So essentially, this is actually an edible and it's absolutely gorgeous and delicious. Okay, next update is this little container. You can see over here, this was a sedum that I cut back. And then over on this side, let me take you around. This is the portulaca that I cut back completely. Now, this centerpiece, I am actually going to try to bring it indoors. The reason I did all that cutting back was because... I found an aphid infestation here. And so right now with the temps dipping, I haven't seen any aphid activity. Um, I am going to watch it really, really closely because the last thing I need is aphids in the house. But I think it's going to come inside. Also, look at this little cutie down here. This is where I cut back the sedum and it is sending out new little babies, which I cannot Let's see if I can get that into focus. But I cannot believe it. All these cute little sedum buds. Oh, there's another one up there too. So this sedum, even though I cut it back, it is still alive and well. 
In terms of the veggie garden, I'm actually beginning the process of cutting things back and having it go quiet. So you'll notice I've cut out big tomatoes there. I've cut out tomatoes over here. But what I am loving is look at this basil. This is the African blue basil. And it is showing no sign of frost damage. It has continued to bloom like gangbusters, and I am actually really loving it with this backdrop of the uh, perilla leaves, the shiso. I think this is an absolutely stunning combination, and I already went online and looked for seeds for the African blue. Turns out you can't actually buy seeds for this. So I'm going to go ahead and take some cuttings. Basil is very easy to propagate. And so I'm going to cut a bunch off, throw it in a glass on my windowsill, and start growing some inside. Because this one is, I will say, it has been an absolute winner for me this year, and I have loved it. I've cut this thing back by half. She's back in all her glory. So African blue, this gives just two thumbs up. Okay, so I'm over on my front porch now, and you guys obviously saw my front porch makeover with all the pumpkins. I will link it below if you have not seen that video, but I wanted to add a few things, and I was up at the Dahlia house doing an interview with Anne, and, um, and she, after the interview, she was like, hey, do you want to just like hang out? Do you want to go shop around? And so we went for a little walk through Christensen's, which is, oh my gosh, it is so darn lovely and so much good inspiration. And then we popped over to Gordon's. I don't know if you know anything about Gordon's, but they just do pumpkins. They are absolutely incredible. I mean, they do a couple other things too, but they're known for their pumpkins and their squash. And so when I was there, I <laughs> texted Brian and I was like, I think I want to pick a few more things. Would you look at this little funky pumpkin? It is so cute. And so I picked up two of these, this one and this more kind of like turban style is what they call them. But look at this thing. On the front, it looks like the speckled hound. But on the bottom, you get this really interesting kind of, I don't know, bulbous growth. It's very cool. And so I figure one of my goals for next year is actually to grow more of my own pumpkins. So I figured it was an investment. And it was just a little more than a packet of seeds. And I will have countless number of seeds right inside. So um, those are my new pumpkin additions to the front porch. So I do want to show you kind of this side of the garden. You can see where I have clipped and dropped all of my uh, vining elements from the growing season. I had a bunch of cucumbers growing there. And I'm loving the fact that we invested in shrubs. We invested in this boxwood border because as it continues to fill, it's just going to, we're actually going to form it into kind of a loose hedge. But down here on the bottom, in this little tiny strip along the walkway, I will say the grass was an incredible investment. Love that. The Erigeron, hello, it is still blooming its little head off. I mean, it is just going for broke. The one thing, however, I have loved this sedum, but I will say this is one of the perennials that I will actually cut back before winter hits hard. Um, I find that my sedums, they just end up looking super tattered. So I'll leave these for a few more weeks and then I'm going to say goodbye to them. Um, and then repeating down here, still grasses look great. The Erigeron looks great. Um, I will say, little little update here. This is one of the irises that I was like, oh gosh, I don't know if that looks too good, but look at that. We are actually showing some growth, which is incredible. So, and it looks like something got in here because I'm having these roots come to the surface. So I'm just going to dig these back down while we are here. So I'm loving the irises. This is making me really happy. The fact that I can see new growth there and new growth right there. So those are all tucked in and doing great. The one thing I'm kind of thinking is I may want to invest in another evergreen element out here. I'm not sure what that's going to be. It could be a hookra. It could be, I mean, a little bit of anything, but I do feel like I want some dark foliage out here. This is looking too green on green, and I want a little bit of depth and drama out here. So that's something I'm going to be thinking about during the winter, and we'll jump on it in the spring. Okay. 
So I'm going to be honest with you. What I'm about ready to show you is literally the most exciting thing happening in my garden right now. Um, as you guys, maybe some of you remember, in May, I was at the 12th uh, May Edible Plant Sale. And when I was there, I saw this booth and I was like, oh, interesting. What are they doing? And I went over and it was the Evergreen Chrysanthemum Society. And they were selling rooted cuttings of some of their heirloom chrysanthemums. Well, I went a little bit bananas and I bought a whole bunch of them. But what is happening right now is spectacular. So two things. Number one, the Chrysanthemum Society is having their show this weekend. So it is Friday and Saturday. Is it, is it Sunday as well? I'm going to go to the board here. Hold on just a second. Okay. So the Evergreen Chrysanthemum Association, their annual fall show is happening this weekend. It's November 1st through November 3rd, and it's daily from 11 to 3 p.m. And it's over in Volunteer Park, uh, Capitol Hill neighborhood in Seattle. So if you are there and you see me, come say hello. Um, I will be there kind of gawking at all of the goodies that they have going on. But I'm going to take you in, and this is my... Well, we're going to call this Kate's pre-show. This is my pre-show. So as you know, I bought a ton of these varieties and I'm going to take you in for a tour and we're going to go variety by variety because some of these are the most incredible things I've ever seen. Okay. Brian and I are trying not to freak out right now because these are so, so, so cool. Uh, the first one I'm going to show you is the tallest in my patch. Um, this one is called Safina. It is beautiful. I, you know what? I can't even tell if they're all opened up yet or if they're going to keep opening more. Okay. Let's we just, here we go. They are probably, I would say stretched out six feet tall. I'm going to zoom you in because it is so beautiful. This is Safina. It is incredible. It has a, a red kind of exterior that has a bit of a raspberry in it, but as you go inward, oh my gosh, it's orange with these little yellow tips. And this thing is massive and it is producing dozens of sprays. I mean, had I known it would be this big, I, I probably should have had its own stake on it, I honestly. And I'm going to be taking notes because as I plan for next year, I want to take a bunch of these cuttings into the house. They are just, they are, they are absolutely incredible and I have nothing else like them. So, oh my gosh, these are so, so good. This next one is called Coco Boomy. So it starts out this little bud, and then the first inclination that you kind of are going to see something unusual is it gets these like, they look like little wild hairs. So it starts out in this cute little bud, then you get the wild hairs, and then it starts to open. And this is what you see. There's like plum, there's like a buff color, a little bit of yellow. And then look at this one. This isn't even fully open yet. And look at that thing. It is easily six inches across right now. It is beautiful. And it's going to continue to unfold and change. So Coco Bumi, this, this structure is actually one of the very first things that attracted me to this one um, because it's very spidery and interesting. So I am absolutely loving this selection. Okay, now I do kind of wonder if some of my tags got messed up. This little cutie I have listed as Anderton Polar, and it is so adorable. It's kind of fun. Like, it starts out with these teeny tiny little buds on it, and then as it grows, this center just puffs out more and more. So I don't think this one is fully open yet, but I can't wait to see what actually happens. Okay, this next one I am very, very excited about. It hasn't opened all the way. So this is what's kind of interesting. I'm noticing that these ones, they really, they really come on almost in November. This one is called Nightingale. And you can see one of the reasons I chose it is again, really interesting petal shapes. This is probably the most open, but it is just going to keep unfurling and unfurling. And from the photos, it almost appears like these petals will start to reflex and cascade down each side of this little mum. 
this next one is still in bud stage, but would you look at these crazy petals? This one is called Disconso, and it is really, I, I am so curious to see how this one shapes out. Um, you know, a lot of these, when they're in the bud stage, they all look really uniform, but this one is irregular just right off the jump. I'm going to go ahead and pull this in. Look at these crazy, amazing petals. So Disconso, not fully open, but I had to give you guys a sneak peek because I think it is so unusual and spectacular. This next one, again, still in bud form, but this is Connie Mayhew. And when I was at the um, the Evergreen Chrysanthemum Society, their or association, their booth at the May Tilth sale, they were saying that this is their official, unofficial chrysanthemum. And so it is almost open and I can't wait to see how this looks. This last one, I say, I feel like I saved the best for last. This is Heather James and you can kind of see a myriad. Well, let's just pull in, see if I can find a bud anywhere. Well, let's just look at this. When this first comes out, it is this tiny little bud very cute, very little. But then as it grows, it starts to unfurl. And it kind of is about this stage where you start to realize how many petals are actually in the center of this thing. So then I saw it unfurl to this stage and I was like, oh, that's fantastic. But then this little guy came out and I was like, Oh, oh my God, it, it keeps going because look at that center. I don't even know if this shows up, but honestly, every single day it gets bigger and bigger and bigger until look at this. I just want to show you this profile. Look at these incredible petals. I mean, this thing is like a softball and guess what? There are still more petals in the middle, just packed in, ready to unfurl. So I don't even know if this is the finished state, but man, oh man, that thing is stunning. Well, friends, I think it is safe to say that I will be growing heirloom chrysanthemums next year. They are so beautiful. And I've almost been a little afraid to cut them and bring them into the house just because I, it's like... How are they going to last? What are they going to do? How are they going to perform? So I cannot wait for this weekend. I think it's going to be just kind of like the perfect way to decompress and just go look at some gorgeous flowers. So next thing on my list here is we're going to get a little bit of work done because my ranunks and my anemones are just huge. They are huge. I, I mean, honestly, I should have been looking at these practically every single day and I will show you what I mean. So here we are. My Renunks are like way past pre-sprouted. Here are some of those anemones. Again, we are way past the pre-sprouting phase. Um, but I am going to go ahead and in this row that the bunnies got after and ate all of my seedlings, I'm going to give it a quick weed and we're going to pop them in right here. So these are some of my anemones. This is the Bianco Center Nero, and you can see they have really come up quite a bit. So I'm gonna gingerly pull one out of the ground to show you what we are working with here. Ah! Oh! Now I way should have done this when these roots were like an inch long and we're rocking two inches here. So this is essentially what is going to happen to your little anemone underground. Um, I'm going to pop these into the ground about, I would say three inches deep and probably around four to six inches apart. And by the way, that right there, 10 out of 10 germinated. I mean, could not be more perfect. So next, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same order that I did the planting in. So I'm going to go anemone, ranunculus, anemone, ranunculus. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to do this fumato and dig down here and pluck one of these little guys up. Check that little cutie out. So lots of really great bud development 
And these roots, this is about much more what you want to be looking at when you pre-sprout these. It's still early on in its growth process and roots are not entangled. So I'm going to get these guys in the ground and you're just going to see me zip on through. Also, as a side note, what I love about planting in a drip tape is there's automatically emitters every six inches. And so it is just so, so, so easy for me to lay out all of my plants. Oh, again, all 10 pre-sprouted. And by the way, I know mine are a little bit higher than, they're a little bit more well-established, well-grown than I would prefer, but I'm still going to chuck them down deep. And you may only see when I'm finished here, just the itty bitty bits of the green leaves poking up. Um, I don't have any concern that these guys are going to continue growing and continue pushing through the surface. And any extra potting soil from the pre-sprouting process I am just throwing back on top. Um, by the way, this ground has already been thoroughly amended. We brought in tons of compost and if you've been following along for a while, this is the row that was completely obliterated by the bunnies. And so nothing really had a chance to grow here. Therefore, we still have all of this like yummy, amazing compost and biotone still hanging out in the soil. Okay, let's see how these guys did. We have one two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, let's see how we're doing. Eight, nine, and 10. You guys, again, 10 for 10 in the pre-sprouting process, perfection. Last one. Again, crema. 10 out of 10. This is this is absolutely just spec in my opinion, this is spectacular. A plus corms and these are awesome. Okay, friends, I want to show you a couple things. First and foremost, out of all of those nemones and ranunculus, only one failed to pre-sprout. And I can kind of like squeeze on it and it's getting some like juices coming out. This means it's rotting. So I'm not even going to bother with this. This is going to go directly in the compost. I do, however, want to show you. If I had my ideal scenario, this is the perfect stage for a pre-sprouted anemone. Um, I could even take these a little bit shorter. But do you see how we're just like barely coming up? Um, this hasn't even really seen the light of day. It was still below the ground. And so this is like the perfect, most perfect of all time stages for your pre-sprouted anemone to go into the ground. So I want to show you, I had a couple renunks in my Dolce Amore mix that didn't germinate or didn't sprout. So right here is a little clump that didn't sprout. What happened instead is it got squishy. And then let me see if I can actually show you. As you get in here, do you see how like when you squish it, it like has all that yucky stuff that comes out? This is a renunk that has failed which is totally fine. I mean, that is to be expected. No one is perfect. And uh, if this happens to you, you are not alone. I've sprouted hundreds of these darn things. And every once in a while, it just fails on me. However, I do want to show you an example of like the perfect pre-spout 
pre-sprout stage. So this, in an ideal world, they all look about like this or even a wee bit smaller when I put them into the ground. So some of mine are a little taller, but it's not important. This is what we're shooting for, and any approximation of this is better than nothing. One last tip. As you are planting these, if yours have grown quite a little bit more like mine have, basically you're going to dig your hole, you're going to put it in, and then when we backfill it, instead of me pushing down on top of it, I actually backfill by pushing in sort of a quadrant with these two fingers because I don't want to snap the tip of my Renunc, but I do want to snug it into the ground. So if you notice me as I'm planting, I'm doing the same motion over and over again. I'm putting these little guys in, getting the dirt around it, and then doing my kind of quadrant push in from the sides so that the neck stays nice and straight, but we have that firmed soil all the way around. Friends, I'm going to keep you posted because we still have half of these chrysanthemums that have yet to open. And I am thrilled. I am thrilled because every day it changes how they appear. So thank you for coming along on this kind of funny little garden tour. End of October, we are like final descent into winter. And I just, it kind of makes, I'm kind of excited. I'm going to be honest. I'm kind of excited. I'm ready to go a little bit slower. I'm ready to put things to bed. Oh, and if you're around this weekend, go to the Chrysanthemum show. Okay. I'll see you in the next one. In the meantime, say hello to your garden for me.